All right, guys, what's going on? This is the second part of this series. This is just where I'm going to go over all the wiring for the uh, 6S Mini F4 V2 uh, flight stack and the CADEX camera together. Um, as you can see, pretty much all of this is uh, already put together. I did work on this for um, way too long, uh, to tell you the truth. But we'll take a look here. We got the CADEX Turtle V2 up at the top. We have the plug coming out, which is just the OSD menu board control. And then you have your video, your ground, and your power, which it requires at least five volts of power to run the CADEX camera. For some reason, I keep getting 4.5 4 uh, in the bottom corner, so I'm not too sure if that's gonna affect it when I actually go to fly, but I should be getting a constant five volts off the flight controller. So what I did here was, I'll just pop these out real quick. All right, so here's the wiring harness that I'm using, which is, the top of the CADEX uh, Turtle V2 plug uh, and then just where the ground power and the video come down I have it connected to a different uh, ground power and video which this plug right here I kind of want to show you guys this too real quick I should really really mention this because I never had problems like this before so right here is the manual that they give you for the iFlight Success Mini F4 V2 flight flight tower flight stack, and I you so this manual is actually it's it's really good um, it's good diagram, but they shouldn't give it because it's actually wrong. Um, well, in my case, it is anyway. I use DSM X right here. So you got your free sky, uh, I don't even know what that is, just a TBS, uh, Team Black Sheep, Nano or something. Um, but I use DSM-X. So if you look right here, this is noted as um, the receiver pin uh, on the back of the flight controller, which I will show you is... Ooh which is this one right here, okay? So, as you can see, I only have two wires going to there, a power and a ground. Now, they show it that I should have the ground power, which they tell me to use the 3.5 volts, but I use the uh, SPM, 4649T receiver, which this is a uh, telemetry receiver, so this needs anywhere from 4 to 8.4 volts, so running it off 3.3 uh, really wouldn't have worked for me. Um, so, when they tell you to use this plug right here, and the way they tell you to use it is, uh, even if I was to switch it around, having the ground the five volts I need, and the RX-6 coming here, this does not work. Do not go by this picture. Um, I actually emailed the company and I asked them, uh, what was the, the problem with this? Why wasn't uh, my receiver able to connect to here? And it's not that my receiver wouldn't connect because I've bound it, uh, connected to the quad many a times before. So I knew that I could do that. But originally, I was like, oh, let me just do it the, the simple way, you know, uh, you know, less confusion, less problems. I used the bind plug for the receiver. I bound it to my remote, which I do use the DX6E. Um, bound it to my remote. Everything bound up fine. Disconnected it. It worked. I went and plugged it into the quad exactly the way it said. And as soon as I powered up, the receiver went back into bind mode. I had this problem for about two days trying out different stuff. I tried uh, different ports. I tried, because um, they tell you here to use the uh, URT6 port and put on the soft serial. 
So they tell you to do that and use the uh, the Spectrum uh, Spectrum 2048 serial receiver. Um, I could not get that to work. I emailed the company. They sent me this photo right here, and they said, try this. Um, this should work, which that photo, uh, as you can see, is a little bit different than the diagram here. I tried that, and once again, that did not work. So I went to the CLI tab. I tried doing the uh, get spectrum commands, uh, set, spe uh, set spectrum underscore sat underscore bind equals nine, uh, save, enter. I tried doing all that, and none of that would work. Then I went down to the configurator in Betaflight, which we'll get to in the next video, and I went in there and I turned on the uh, the soft serial uh, port in the configurator, the configuration. That wasn't on for some reason. Then I started to get jitter in all my channels, like none of the channels worked correctly. So like say I had it plugged into Betaflight, quads powered up, receivers connected, and I would move just roll or just yaw, and I would have like... 12 channels showing up when I'm only supposed to have six and more than half of them would move. So what it came down to was just good old Google searching a pinout diagram for the F4 V2 flight tower. And what I came up with was a total different diagram. The one I came up with, I'm going to put a picture of it right now. So as you can see, they tell you to wire your DSMX receiver to this RX1 pin right here. And then have your, your, your power and your ground running normal. So I said, okay, well, I've tried everything else uh, for the last three days now. So let me just go ahead and try that out. What's the worst that could happen? So if you can see, it's a little tough. But if you could see right down here... This little pad right here, you can see that little bit of solder. Yeah, that is the uh, the R1, RX1 connection right here that I have soldered to. It's just behind the ground pad. Um, so once again, I soldered that up, went back into Betaflight, which we'll get to in the next video, and made sure that all everything was still the same, the receiver was set up, because that kept disconnecting, connecting back up, changing, going to uh, PWM for some reason. So I m kept checking that every time I went back into beta flight, made sure that was set. Then I went into the configurator, made sure soft serial was on. And in the end, that is the way I needed to do it. This diagram did not work for me. Uh, if I just needed power and ground, yeah, sure. But I needed the signal to connect. So what they give you here, I don't know if this is an old manual or whatnot, but I did just purchase this like a week or two ago, so this should not be an old manual, but it didn't work for me. So, other than the wiring for the receiver going into the flight controller, which I also, you know, I have the manual for it right here, which is just simple, you know, line, line plug and the harness, Power it up, unplug the bind plug while it's still powered, then unplug it, then you can turn off your transmitter, and it should bind back up, which I had no problem with, but it was something with this pin right here causing a, a short, because that's what you need. You need the ground and the signal to short out to put the receiver in bind mode. So something in here was shorting this out for some reason, and it just kept doing that. Um... And then the last setting I did change was in the CLI tab, uh, which we'll get to in a second. I did change that because uh, it had auto reset to on. Um, for whatever reason, every time I use these receivers, uh, if I leave it on auto reset, it automatically resets the model. And then when I go to connect to it, it doesn't it doesn't actually connect. It's like I need to rebind it every time. And it's really kind of a pain. So I just uh, type in a command, which I'll show you in the next video. And I turn that auto reset off. So other than that, uh, as you can see, that's, that's just about it. I kept it super, super minimal. Uh, I've got my receiver antennas coming up. This is just regular heat shrink. 
a couple of zip ties. I have my uh, MMCX, which I'm trying out the, uh, the dipole first before I put on the micro axi antenna. Um, my camera mount, as you can see, these are the carbon fiber plates that I actually did cut. Um, I filed these out by hand in the end because I needed them a little bit skinnier at the top than I needed the base. Um, and this actually fits uh, very well. It fits very good. Uh, these red standoffs I did cut. Uh, these were 35 millimeters. I had to obviously cut those shorter. The, uh, the original standoffs were, and those came in at 19 and 23, a four millimeter difference. The ones I have on here now, the backs are a 26 and the fronts are a 30. And as you can see, when that lines up, that lines up pretty well with the frame, if I don't say so myself. Uh, super clean build, 3 to 4S. Um, other than that, it's just uh, the wiring of the motors uh, to the 4-in-1 ESC and your power and ground to the flight stack, which the flight stack is a 35-amp flight stack with a 45-amp burst. Uh, this does, the stack runs 2 to 6S, but my motors, unfortunately, only run 3 to 4S. Um, so I will only be using this on a 3 to 4S. Um, but that's not too bad for a 3-inch build. And I'll probably be using this with these uh, gem fan, what are these? These are the 30, 3052s. Uh, nice, nice pitch angle. Should be a nice little ripper. So let's uh, let's get to this next video and uh, head on into Betaflight and check out all the settings and the transmitter settings. Stay tuned.